Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, today we're going to do a podcast about fly tying. Um, just kind of a in general podcast about fly tying. Uh, this will be good for people just getting into fly tying or even people who have been doing it for a while. Um, it's For me, it's kind of interesting to see what others are doing and just their little tips or maybe they have something, or maybe I have something that I do that's different from what you do and it might benefit. Um, so that's the goal with this podcast is just to help kind of get everything laid out and get you started a little bit or help with um, something that you've already done. Um and maybe organization skills, something like that, you know, who knows. So I want to talk um, about all around fly tying here. So most people in general, if you are listening to this podcast, um, are probably, you probably do tie flies. Maybe you don't. Um, If you don't, hopefully you can get into it. It is definitely something that benefits fishing. Um, it'll, it'll benefit your fishing. You're going to see a lot more improvement with bug selection and catching fish and, um, where to fish those flies, how to fish those flies. So after posting, um, doing bugs and beer, the, in talking about, um, how I tie certain flies and when I fish them or where I fish them, I decided I'd go into and, and, kind of expand on my fly tying just a little bit. Um, at times it's definitely a chaotic mess and there's just shit everywhere and I don't clean it up for months on end. And then, you know, it's always good to get around and clean all that up. But anyways, we're going to talk about all that. But, um, if you're just getting into it, um, you know, obviously you want to set up a good area for you to be able to tie flies. Um, you're going to want ample space to kind of spread out a good table is nice. You know, um, kitchen table is good at times, but you know, maybe you're married or have a girlfriend or whatever that you live with. They might get a little pissed that there's feathers and crap all over the table. I know I was, I went through that a little bit where I was trying to designate a space or going through moving or whatever and trying to figure out where to tie. And I always end up kind of at the kitchen table tying. Um, and it, it is a mess. So, if, if you do have an area, try and try and designate a small area if you can. Um, but be, you know, you want to be able to spread out a little bit and you, as you get into it, you're going to start to acquire more stuff and more materials and you're going to need more storage. So the more you can grow your area, it definitely helps because it is, it is addicting and you will get into it and just start buying materials. I'm constantly, I mean, everybody knows who's already tying, um, who's been tying for a long time has lots of materials and there's most of the guys I run into or my buddies or fishing guides or whoever, they definitely have their own little space for tying. Um, and I kind of can't stress the fact that you want to definitely make it your own, whether you have kids or a girlfriend or roommates or whoever, because I know from personal experience that I've, I've definitely had roommates that have, you know, using tools, taking tools or the, Oh, I could use this to clean out my pipe, you know, and I can smoke a little bowl or something like that. You know, Hey, I'm gonna use this to clean this out. And then you have to make sure, Hey, you know, where'd my tools go? Why are you using it for that? That's not yours. It's mine. So kids, wife, girlfriend, whoever they, you know, there are a lot of fancy tools that we use and that are good for other applications. So, um, make sure you definitely designate it your own. Um, like I said, good table. You definitely want a comfortable chair. At times, you might be sitting for hours on end. Uh, I know at time when I'm doing it during the winter, I sit for, you know, four or five hours tying flies at times, and it can definitely beat you up. So you want to make sure you have a good, comfortable chair to sit in, and make sure that you are able to sit there for a while. Um, and then you know, lighting is huge when you're picking an area. I like to use natural light, uh, but obviously I do tie it at night, and so you can't always have that natural light. So being able to have good lamps and good lighting in the in that area um, is key. And you can purchase small lamps or whatever from Walmart or you know wherever, and have pretty cheap lights that'll that'll do the trick. I know there's fancier lights out there that you can buy just for fly tying, 
that definitely get pretty expensive. So I use, you know, a stand up light where I'm at next to my desk. And then I'll obviously I have lights up top and then I have another lamp on my desk that I use if it's, if I need a little bit more lighting. So that tends to help. Um, and then you're going to want an area that you're willing to get a little dirty. Uh, you're going to have feathers and hair and beads and hooks everywhere. So luckily for me, I've most of the places I've lived in, I've had wood floors um, and they're not in the nicest wood floors. So I'm able to sweep up all that stuff and clean it all up at the end or, you know, whenever I feel like cleaning it up. Um, but, you know, vacuuming definitely. So if you're doing it on a carpet or something, maybe you want to lay down a sheet underneath you or um, those plastic mats, something that that'll be able to catch all that stuff and keep it from getting in and grinding into, you know, your floor if you have a nice floor. If you're lucky enough to have your own space or extra bedroom or office or something that you could do it in, that's great. Uh, I've lived in a couple different places now where I, I've, the only, I've only had one place where I've had a room kind of designated to gear and fly tying, and that's definitely helped a lot where I can close the door and sit in there and be away from everybody and not have to worry about, um, like I said, whether roommates or girlfriends watching TV, roommates watching TV, cooking, whatever, music going on. You can kind of sit and just kind of, you know, be in that room all alone and do your own things. It's a lot. It is an office for, you know, us guides that is part of our office is having that fly tying table and being able to tie flies if we need to and crank them out. So, um, if you have that option, that's great. You know, basements work well. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking for a place to set up your tying station. Um, I know there are little mobile stations that you can buy too that are just small little uh, platforms where you can put your vice on and everything like that and set up. So definitely keep that in mind when, when trying to find an area to, to tie your flies in if you're just getting into it. All right, so I'm going to jump into um, organizing your fly tying table a little bit and, um, you know, making sure you know where everything is and can find everything because it does help with tying if you do know where all your materials are. And I know for me, if my desk is clean, I've cleaned it up, then I usually have a better time while I'm tying flies. I'm not constantly searching for stuff, looking for certain materials, so... At times, my table's definitely in just an organized mess where there's just shit everywhere. I can't, you know, I, I know where things are, but yeah, it's a mess. Um, and it's my mess, you know. But if I do clean it up and organize it a little bit, then it helps. So, um, obviously, storage is huge. And I'm going to kind of, I'm going to circle back around to storage here in just a minute. Um, but storage is good, you know, obviously. Um, if you can get those Rubbermaid bins or little Rubbermaid drawers you can buy probably online or at Walmart or something or craft stores. Craft stores would be a great place to look for those bins and maybe have some drawers in them, smaller bins uh, where you can store all that stuff, all those materials that you're going to be accumulating over the years. Um, you know, talking about craft stores, what I do is I'll buy, you know, bead boxes that they use for, you know, beads for bracelets or whatever. And I'll, with the little squares in them they're already organized they're set up like a grid almost and I can put my fly tying beads in there and you know I have a box for brass I have a box for tungsten I have a box for miscellaneous beads you know dumbbells and glass beads and um, so you want to be able to organize all that so that you can find it and obviously you want to label all those you know and I you can get one for hooks as well um, that's a good way to go about it is just kind of organize all that stuff in there. So that way you can just grab a box and go, Hey, I'm tying tungsten today. I need a 3.2 millimeter bead or whatever you can, boom, there they are. And all your colors might be in there or you can color coordinate. It's really up to you how elaborate you want to get with it. But so those bead boxes help if you go to craft stores and can find those, or like I said, you can find them at Walmart. They do have those bead boxes and those storage bins. So that's going to be good for lots of different applications. Um, but like I said, I'm going to kind of circle back around to storage and how I like to store things and organize all my hair and materials and stuff like that. So um, 
tools, when you're organizing your tools, I like to use um, a tool caddy. I use a Renzetti foam tool caddy. It's relatively inexpensive, about 20 bucks. You can get a Renzetti tool caddy. And I like the fact that they're foam because if I need to, I can hang hooks on them if I'm drying them or if they're waiting to go, you know, maybe I put a bead on there already and I'm, I set it on, I can just hook it in the foam and let it sit there. Um, and when I'm ready to use it, I can just pull it right off the foam and that's easy. But the Renzetti Tool Caddy is awesome. It has different size holes for all your tools and that way you can keep all your tools organized and clean you know away from adhesives away from waxes or whatever you're using and like I said there's little spots for each and I'll try and post some pictures of this as I go but um, tool caddies are great I have tons of different tools in them and as you start to accumulate more tools that caddy definitely helps um, so I would suggest investing in one or maybe you know asking somebody for one for Christmas. They're super cheap. Like I said, that's a great gift um, to get. And it's also a great gift to give too. So um, look at that. I'm not sponsored by Renzetti or anything like that, but that is probably my favorite tool caddy. There's more out there and I've seen people do a lot of different things. I recently saw somebody online who made a tool caddy of an antler, you know, a deer antler, and they drilled holes through there and were able to slide all their tools in, you know, scissors and bobbins and all that. Um, so the tool caddy is, is great idea. I'm not going to talk about types of tools too much and you know, where to get them or what's, what's the right brand for tools or whatever. Um, you can purchase toolkits online or at Cabela's at Bass Pro at your local fly fishing shop. Obviously shop local first, you know, check your local shop, see if they have any toolkits. Most of them do. Um, and they can be relatively inexpensive and they can also get all the way up into the 50, 60, 70, you know, all the way up to $90 range for toolkits. And there's some that are good out there. There's some that aren't as good, but if you're just starting out, you don't need anything crazy. I think if you are going to spend a little bit money, I try and spend them on, you know, maybe a little bit nicer ceramic bobbin or, um, some nice scissors. I like to use Dr. Slick scissors. They're a little bit more expensive, but they are relatively sharp and they keep that edge for a long time. Good scissors are kind of key when you're tying flies. So I like my scissors to be sharp. I have a little short pair and then a longer pair. You know, I think they're four inches or something um, that help with different applications. So I couldn't tell you honestly a bobbin brand to get. Um, you know, like I said, I'd research just a little bit, but you don't have to go crazy as long as it's tight, does what it needs to do. It's kind of a dealer's choice there, what kind of bobbin you like. Um, but most kits will have a good bobbin in them or maybe two good bobbins, bobbins that you can use. Um, and you're going to continue to acquire tools throughout your tying career. So I wouldn't worry too much of it right off the bat. I would go basic to start and then you can start researching a little bit more into it about what kind of tools you need. But those kits are going to have everything you're going to need to get started. And like I said, you can... Gain as you go, you're going to have more tools. You're going to find different things for different different applications and maybe maybe tools you have laying around the house that you might need for certain things. Um, you know, needles are great to have. Uh, you can poke through eyes if you glue them or whatever. I like having a couple needles around. Also good for different tying applications. Those needles, you can tie foam onto them and make foam bodies differently. So um, that's kind of more advanced, but like I said, as you get into it, you're going to acquire more, but don't think about it too much right off the bat. I'd almost say the same thing as you get into vices and start looking at a good vice to use. You can start out basic if you're just getting into it. Um, I had basic vice for a long time. Um, and so I wouldn't think too crazy about it. You know, there's vices out there that can go up to five, six hundred dollars or more, but you don't need to spend that right off the bat. You can again, buy a kit or something with a vice in there that'll work for now. And then as you start getting into tying and like it, enjoy it, you want to do more, then you can start looking at a little bit more pricey vices. Um, so again, I'm not going to go too much into it. I'm not great at that and I can't give too much advice on it. You know, maybe a commercial tire might have a little bit better idea of what to use. Again, I use a Renzetti vise, uh, not too expensive, about $200 vise or so. 
and they also go down from there. You know, there's an apprentice vice that I had for a while that was, I think maybe around a hundred bucks or so. So, um, and at the time when I was getting that, that was expensive for me. Man, a hundred bucks. That's, that's a lot, but you can get a kit that'll have a basic vice in it. That'll, that'll be good to start. So again, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I can't really tell you, Hey, this is the best vice to use. This is the best company to go with. This is the one you're going to need. I'm not going to go into that. Um, again, like I said, same on tools, but I don't really have a leg to stand on when it comes to those. A lot of commercial tires are going to have a better idea of what brands and, um, you know, what style that they like to use. All right. So we've talked a little bit about um, your tying area, organization of tools, types of tools, a little bit about types of tools, um, storage, you know, what type of storage you're looking for, what's the easiest or what I use at least. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, organization of materials and how I like to organize things. Um, so I've talked about, you know, what type of bins you can get, you know, obviously the bins with the drawers you can get at craft stores or whatever. Um, but what I like to do when I'm organizing my materials is I have a lot of different bins that, you know, I have a couple big bins. I have a couple small bins. I have some that are wider, some with different drawers, you know, smaller drawers, larger drawers, whatever. But how I like to do it is like organize like materials together. So I'm going to have all my beads and all my hooks in a drawer. I'm going to have all my boxes that I like to, you know, take on the, take and put in the boat. If something, you know, those little plastic cups or bins or whatever I have in there in case I need to put some flies in there real quick, or I don't have my fly box on me or whatever. Um, and then I have, I store all my, like I said, like materials together. So I'm going to try and put, you know, all of my hair in a drawer. So I'm going to have all my elk hair, all my deer hair, all my spinning hair, all my colored hair, all my moose hair, calf hair, whatever. All the hair is going to go together. Um, all the feathers I like to store together, pheasant feathers, um, ostrich, peacock, everything, everything you can imagine feather wise, I'm going to put in a drawer as well. All my dubbing, same thing. Um, so on and so on. I, I mean, I actually have a drawer that says rubber shit. So everything related to rubber is going to go in that drawer. Um, rubber legs, all my sexy floss, all my hopper legs, um, D rib, you know, anything that's rubber is going in there. Anything that's related to rubber is going to go in there. I even have a drawer for all my flash, all my flash of boo, everything, that is flashy. It's all going in the same thing. So you get the idea. You know, I have a drawer for foam. All the foam that I own goes in that drawer. That way I can find it all. It's all categorized um, by type of foam, size of foam. So when you open the drawer, you can go, okay, cool. I'm looking for two mil gray. Um, boom. There it is. Got it. Cool. Um, same thing with thread, wire, um, tinsel, anything you're using that is on a spool has its own little drawer. All my thread has a little drawer. All my wire has a drawer. All my wraps, all my lead wrap has a drawer. Um, like I said, again, all my tinsel, all my um, flash on spools have drawers. So everything that is like goes together. That way it's easier to find. I'm not constantly searching for a certain material. I'm going, oh, where the heck did I put these mayfly tails? I'm going to put those with my feathers. I know that in my head. So whatever system works well for you, that's the system you should use. But that's what I like to do. And then I also have another interesting way I like to organize my materials. I'm not sure where I got this idea. Um, it might have been, I think it was the Thin Air Angler. I think I saw it on Instagram or Facebook or something. But um one Christmas, my, my mom always likes to get me fishing gear for Christmas, obviously, you know, and she might not know exactly what I'm looking for or whatever. So she buys something that I, she thinks I can use. A lot of it is she likes to buy me little bags, you know, that are meant for fishing or whatever. So she bought me this bag one year. I think it was a Cabela's bag or something, a big tackle bag. 
Um, and it was full of those plastic customizable lure boxes, you know, eight or 10 of them or so. Um, and you know, the ones where you can just put them in the slots and make the slot a certain size for whatever, you're, whatever lure you're trying to put in there, tube jigs, uh, Rapala's, whatever. Um, so what I did is I started categorizing those lure boxes. I started taking them and go, okay, so I want all my stone fly materials to be in this box. If so let's say there's something I tie more often than not, you know, stone flies, I tie a lot of stone flies. I'm going to make a Pat's rubber legs box. Um, and I'm going to put all the thread I would use for Pat's rubber legs, uh, all the chenille, all the rubber legs, all my lead wire, all my wrap, all my beads, whatever I need for stone flies are going in a box. That way I can, you know, if I want to tie golden stones, I can grab the stone fly box. I can open it up. It has everything I need to tie golden stones in it. It has my flashback. It has my thin skin. It has my wire, has my hooks, has my beads, whatever I need for that. If I want to go and, Hey, I need to tie black Pat's rubber legs today. Boom. Open up the stone fly box. It's all there. It's all organized according to what I like to tie. Um, and so that helped me a lot. You know, I even, I have one for worms. All right, everything there is to think about to tie worms. I have squirmy wormy material. I have chenille. I have hooks. I have beads. I have wire. I have everything I need for worms. It's all here. All my threads here. Everything I need for worms is right here. Um, pheasant tails, same thing. I tie a lot of pheasant tails or things related to pheasant tails. I also put you know stuff for prince nymphs in there. They're pretty similar. A lot of natural materials. So I have a box that has all my pheasant tail, different colors. Um, all my wire hooks, beads, whatever I need for pheasant tails is right there. So it's an interesting way of doing it, but you can take that box out and know that you have everything you need right there. That way you're not searching around for it. So, um, as I was kind of outlining this episode, I started to think about it and there's a culinary term, um, that's very similar to this. It's called mise en place. Um, it's a French culinary term where, which basically means everything is in its place. So before you go to tie, um, you're going to pull all the, your, all your materials out to tie that bug. You know, let's say you're tying 20 inch stones today. All right. I need my peacock. I need, um, my dubbing to dub it. I need my bias. I need, uh, my lead wire. I need my beads. I need my flashback. I need my partridge. I need to pull everything out for that bug. So, that way you're not running around looking for it or jumping around going, you know, it's the same way when you're cooking in your kitchen, you're not going to go, okay, I'm going to make lasagna. I'm going to leave everything where it's at. Okay. I'm going to go grab my Italian sausage, cook it. Oh wait, I need to grab my sauce. Oh, and I also have ricotta cheese in there. Oh, I need, no, you want to have everything mise en place, everything close, everything right there. Everything is in its place. So you don't have to get up. You don't have to look for anything. So that's why those boxes help me for sure. And I can take them places, you know, again, let's say I want to go tie at a buddy's house. I'm going to tie stone flies tonight all night. All right. I'm just going to grab the stone fly box. Everything I need to tie stone flies is right there. Don't have to think about it. You know, and I do that more for bugs. I like to tie often. Um, I, I, I tie a lot of stone flies. I tie a lot of worms. I tie a lot of pheasant tails. So obviously I'm going to have those boxes also kind of dedicated a couple dry boxes, you know, Hey, I'm going to have everything I need to tie elk hair caddis, everything I need to tie stimulators, um, you know, Goddard caddis, anything is going to be in its own box that we can go. All right. I'm tying, I'm tying dry tonight. Boom. I can grab that box. It's got a little bit of foam. It's got a little bit of everything. I can kind of just split it up. It's almost like you're meal prepping, you know, where you make meals for the week or whatever. It's the same thing. You're, om you're almost meal prepping for tying flies. You're putting everything, organizing it. That way you can just pull out that box and everything's mise en place. Everything's right there. Um, so think about that as you're going into it. That has helped me a ton and helped me organize my stuff a lot better. And again, I think I saw it on Instagram. Um, I think it was, uh, just for some reason I just spaced, I just said it. Um, Thin Air Angler. I think that's Bob Reese, maybe. Yeah, I think he had that on his Instagram at one point. I went, oh, this is a great idea. So I'm just sharing that. Um, I'm not claiming that as my own, but obviously you can tweak it however you want and put whatever you want in those boxes so that you can tie whatever you need to that day and just make it easy on you. And you know, this is 
this can kind of help with cleanup as well. You know, that way you're not struggling to find where everything goes again. It can all just go back into that one bin or one box. Um, again, those are just lure boxes. You can buy basic lure boxes online or Walmart or tackle shops or wherever, and they're pretty cheap. And you can customize how you want the inside to look with um, different little compartments for thread or whatever. You just throw in those spacers and just they're slotted. Um, so they're pretty easy. So that'll help clean everything up a little bit. That way, make just make things a little bit easier on yourself for sure. And you know, I'm even so anal where I go as far as having a little little Tupperware or something like, I mean, an old yogurt container or salsa container, one of those plastic ones with the lid or something where I'd take materials that I've used or cut or something, just scrap materials. I have a little scrap Tupperware where I throw all my scraps in there, all my flash, all my thread, all my hair. You never know when you're going to need any of that stuff. Um, Rubber legs, you know, a lot of people throw that stuff out or just go straight to the trash with it. But if you think about it, uh, it, that stuff is expensive. And so you want to be able to save that and maybe you can use it for another application at some point in time or go, Hey, I just need a little piece of flash for this bug or something. I'm just missing this amount. You can go through your little scrap bucket and go, Oh, boom, got it. There it all is. Or, Hey, I just need a piece of thread to split this hair or something uh, or split these mayfly tails. Boom. There you go. Got it. Um, so I, that's that's a little bit more anal, but it's still along the lines of just keeping everything organized, keeping everything in its own place, mise en place. Everything's just right where you can find it every time. Um, you know, and as I start doing, I'm going to do some more bugs and beer as well and go over that stuff. As I'm doing that, I want to try to incorporate, um, you know, hit on little tips and topics that'll help as you're tying Um and certain outlets that you can look for. But definitely as you're, as you're getting into tying, if you're not already, um, even if you are into tying and looking for different outlets or anything like that, um, you know, go to tie nights, you know, a ton of people have fly shops, have tie nights. They, um, you know, sit down and they can teach you different things about handling all your materials or whatever. This is just one outlet here, the podcast, um, that I'm doing, but, As I start getting more into tying a little bit this winter, I'm going to try and do a fair amount this winter um, about tying certain bugs. And I'd like I'm going to throw in more tips um, and that I like to use that help me. I can't fit it all into one, um, so it's going to be broken up definitely. But I wanted to do this one to help people just organize a little bit better again those tips help me that I have found. And so I want to share them with everybody. And that's kind of part of the, the guided trip is sharing those things that you don't get to see very often or hear very often. Um, and it comes straight from a guide who does tie a lot. And I do a lot of tying, you know, night before trips where I go, Oh man, I need, uh, you know, half a dozen hoppers or I need this or whatever. And I can whip out a box and go, boom, there's all my hopper materials. All right. I can tie hoppers now. That way I'm not looking around. So those tips definitely help. Um, and being anal about your materials and everything is, is huge in this game. So I hope this has helped you a little bit. Um, obviously if you have any tips, if you have any questions, if you have anything that I didn't clarify or you want cleared up, don't hesitate to shoot me an email, the guided trip at gmail.com. Look me up on Instagram, the guided trip. Um, and you can shoot me a message on there as well. But please don't hesitate. Reach out. Let me know if you want to add something or you want me to bring something up or you need something clarified for sure. I appreciate the support, everybody listening. Um, It's been a while. I've been off of the podcast for a long time. Um, Just been busy and life catches up with you. So hopefully I can get back at it jump on some of this stuff and clarify a lot of things for you guys. Um, Again, I appreciate it. Look me up, message me. Thanks, guys. 